I guess we're good to go. Alright guys and welcome to Red Alert 3. We are now continuing with the series as you requested because I had some doubts whether should I continue casting this beef between two players or not so I wanted to ask you people and it looks like we have six votes that voting yes and I think that should be enough so this is the continuation of the rivalry between Master X and Alvin Tay. All of these games are played on Infinite Isle which is happy for me because this is overall the best map in the Red Earth 3 and I can't really remember the final score between our players like who had the upper hand or not but all I can see on I mean so many replays have been posted with intention of belittling the other one like how to bash the kind of Alvente or vice versa how to bash Master X and then counterfeit tutorial and stuff like that I mean that's not the good sport that we can think of but anyway, there is beef, there is drama, so as long as it's still in a friendly manner, we can always enjoy the content. So right now we get to see some Imperial Warriors starting, but these Imperial Warriors, I would say, are not actually doing anything benevolent. On the meantime, we get to see Javelins, and I think this is going to be a rip job, and rip job always means danger. I mean, at this point, I can easily say a big danger for the Alente for the main reason is he still doesn't have the Mecha Bay. So not having the Mecha Bay is something very terrible if you're going to face. He still sees it, that's something good. So if this Riptide ever wants to take the tour from the seas, this Burstron can attach itself and then slow the Rip Job by himself some time. But I think he is not considering that. He is scouting he decides to scout over here for some reasons. Now, I think Master X has the means to end this game. However, the trouble is there is a Defender VX here. And I don't think this Riptide can pass over this Defender VX without taking damage. It's better if there are some wolves being injected over here. So that would be much more better. And of course, the Riptide will take a lot of damage by traversing this path to reach it. And Master X takes a detour and I think he wants to use a sea route over there. This javelin is also clearing the garrison which is nice. Apollo pulls the burst drone and destroys immediately. Another defender core. I mean, from the looks of it, Alan Tay will rely on a lot on base defenses. And right now this defender VX is on anti-air mode already. So this is very nice, I mean taking this garrison. I mean, destroying or taking it is very good for, against your opponent because after all they can do a lot of things and the trouble starts brewing. This defender core needs many years to deploy but the Riptides already reached the shore and now they are making contact with the refinery and two Vindicators are enough to destroy this defender vehicle. Now, Tengu has arrived, meeting with Apollo, Javelin's ejected and this thing gets shredded into pieces. Now, <laughs> five Javelin's and worse, there is Engineer but this Engineer is accompanied so this Selling off this instant generator can actually slash this engineer immediately. Now one threat has been addressed, but there are still threats over here. Two tangos are engaging to meet them, but these indicators are not doing anything nice for now. I mean, both are being dropped. A very nice reverse move, so the splash damage of the tangos are not affected. Now, Master X is having some troubles with the bug of the Red Earth If you don't know it, and sometimes even if you click the walls, you can't you can attack, you can't engage them. So you have to let it go for like aggressive move and find which wall section they can attack. So then they can, for example, we can move or micromanage them. Now Tengu is engaging on the Rift Tide, but it's not well. I mean, this Javelin is already a veteran rank. And more Javelins are getting veteran C rank. On the meantime, I want to respond by just taking the oil there. And uh, he, he just can't amass forces before witnessing the destruction of his base. I mean, two Tengus are arriving, but what's what's the point anyway? These Javelins can actually go to go with these Javelins. Now, Master X is not micromanaging his Javelins, but doesn't really matter. The damage has been given. All the Javelins are taken down. And there's only two Riptides. I mean, one is a very low HP, but that doesn't really matter at this point. Alvin Tate strips to one and a half the final growth of income. But he's still fighting, and that's something. These Imperial Warriors are actually doing a big favor to the Peacekeepers and just shoot. I mean, showing their faces to the Peacekeepers. I mean, that's the way they are the most effective. On the meantime, I think Master X is now establishing a very nice control over this map, and I don't think Alvin can recover over this point. Now, Winnicator is approaching the disc, taking this 
kind of DX, but some, I mean, uh, okay. I don't think that was any necessary, right? You can always move in with the puzzles and the minigates. You have the huge advantage. And Alvin, instead of selling his construction yard, he is he's trying to re I mean reestablish his base. Not that bad, but I think Master X is at the point of ending this game. But instead he is taking some time for expansions, which is a solid and nice move as well. I mean better than doing nothing. All this game needs is now just one single cryocopter and Alan Tay can't handle it. Taking down, the I'm sorry, taking down the power plants, and once again, I think Alan is on low power mode. Oh no, he's not actually. Well, one more power plant, and it will be over. But I think this game is already won by the Master X, so. Uh, <laughs> nice that all already coming, but now Alvin. I mean. <laughs> he will lose his base to just a handful of peacekeepers and one single with that, which is nice. Now, Taylor's are engaging on the peacekeepers, but they made him the garrison and he does not have barracks. Does he have a dojo? No, he does not. Collector harassment. Is this happening? Is this good? That's happened. And I wish I didn't miss it, but how did this collector come over here and target this collector? It was. I think it was here and launching some fire and getting damage over here. And then Master X decided to move the collector to repairs and then <laughs> collector to take it. Once again, we. Oh. God. That's cruel and. Yeah, he stole. Yeah. I'm better than losing your refinery once again. But the trouble is, Master X can actually build a multi gunner turret over here. I mean. Instant generators have a build radius and it will allow them. Unlike the Elijah, for example. Nice bomb dodge coming from and not worth the risk this I mean very valuable Vindicator over there. This funky Apollo micro here. Bombs are coming one by one. And yes, the final <laughs> blow to the Alton Alvin Tay is perhaps this. And also this instant generator deployed very low edge. And peacekeepers are being idle. And they're not attacking only the player case. Still he's trying to do some tango breath. And Alvin now retreats to the seas, but I mean we we are talking about the player who has the air force and has riptides all around. Yep, there is a riptide. So I think maybe getting a dogs at first should be a little better. Anyway, I think this score goes to the Master X at this point, I mean, he is playing this very well. But anyway, this fighting spirit, or let's say the rivalry between them, I mean, between Alvin and the Master X, and also trolling move has arrived, Chronosphere has been built. So guys, on the meantime, I would like to hear out your opinion as well. What would be your opinion about the Smurf accounts? Like, we know what the Smurfs are, I mean, players, who, for example, get an alternative account acting as new players, not even revealing their true identity or like if they know how to play or in how much degree of they play, but just they join into random games to win. So, I heard some of the Smurfs, for example, I asked them, like, why would they do this? And they would say, I mean, people will not play with them just because they know who they are. And they are can be agreed on a level, like for example, also Alvin when letting the slam tank die for the peacekeepers, just use the nano defectors and just crush them. I don't really matter at this point. Anyway, so these uh, smart players, for example, whenever they say, like, we want to play the game, but when we, when we play with our real accounts, they will not let us play, or they will just kick out, or anything like that. And that makes it a little bit bad. Because after all, you want to join the game, but just because you know how to play the game better, they will just, I mean, not want to play with you. This can be, like, for example, in one versus one, or in a team game, like, ah, oh, yeah, okay, you've got this very professional player, and, and then teams are not going to balance it. On the meantime, you can also get some enjoyment. Like, for example, imagine that you're playing against a player who plays the game like intermediate level, and then you are a smurf. You're a high tier player. 
and at this point we need to really play main act calculate because you are new because you will see just wins and deaths and you know, wins and loses at zero you have no games and then play other player may think like oh okay this is going to be fun and then he gets bashed instead and that will be furious i mean think about like you always you even like play lightly not to infuriate the player but then you realize it's not actually something like that <laughs> and then and then uh, you get actually trolled by yourself because of your intentions anyway i would like to hear your opinions about how do you view the submersions not only for Red Dead 3 by the way this could be any game like maybe counter strike um maybe starcraft or any other game that you may enjoy so let's see the next game and at this point i will not reveal how they are uploaded because they all have this belittling names so i don't think that's important anyway now we are once again we are back alvin just besides that i think his colors are the matter so now we see him in the green empire and once again master x is on like light blue teal cyan i think they all reflect the same color anyway in allies in the last game we see the master x beautifully zoning the alvin tay with the riptide so i think alvin may have got his lesson and hopefully this time he will build his mecha bay a little bit earlier to prevent rip jowls entering the base and destroying everything now master x is playing once again very balanced opening with just one javelin blocking the target over this garrison and destroying it but i think he may really use same javelin to destroy this one as well in the meantime, Dog meets the Imperial Warrior, but unfortunately, it tastes for the M4 Carbine. So, the why am I asking for the Smurfs, if you may ask? It's actually quite simple. I also play other games as well with guys. I mean, I don't play Red Dead 3 because I love Red Dead 3, but I play terribly. It's like, I know how to drive a car, but I never get in the driver's seat and just driving by myself. I mean, I know most of the build orders, I know the plans, etc. But when it comes to execution, I'm terrible. <laughs> I mean, I can't provide any kind of entertainment, both to myself or my opponent, or my opponents if it's team game. <coughs> but anyway, I really like Red Dead 3. I mean, something this game has always eludes me and I, I just can't forget it. Uh, I've been actively playing the game, like, even from start. Well, of course, not in a multiplayer component, like mostly in skirmish and offline mode. But then I found out the Velora as well. Uh, I get my fair share because the people, people playing the game was like incredible. I met some of the players. Of course, they didn't know who I, who am I anyway, and I didn't know who they were. And I got bashed by them. Uh, this could be any of the players. Like for example, this can be Andre, Mon, uh, you know, God of War. Any kind of professional player you may ask, probably I played with them and lost them. So right now I play other games as well. Like for example, Age of Empires 2 is one of my favorite games. And fortunately I get my fair share on the Smurfs as well. I, mean, I play that game a little bit better. I have more chances. And whenever I meet Smurfs, I'm like, I mean come on, this game is expensive. Is this really worth to, for example, um, getting a new game just for getting a new account? It doesn't really make any sense, but some players I think they have some excuses for going for the stuff and playing the game is something else. Anyway, speaking of the game, let's get back to our game and Alan Tay is now pushing with a handful of infantry. I mean, last game we had a nice uh, naval yard with grip jaws. I don't know why Master X now takes a detour about that and going for a very powerful air build. I mean, we have indicators, which is a nice, a nice bomb micro coming out as well. At this point, these infantry will not serve for anything useful. Maybe dealing some damage to the MCV should be working. I mean, at least you can do some repair damage or force the MCV to do something else. But now, I mean, these are practically doing nothing. Now, Tengu has arrived near the indicator, but there is an opponent, so that shouldn't be a really big trouble. Also, moving the Tengu around these wall spots can actually deal some damage to walls and a light MCV can't reach over here when it's hilltop, so he can't repair the walls. In two tangos, I think you can breach the wall very easily. 
On the meantime, we see a very aggressive position of the second airbase, and that's actually nice. I mean, allies, when they get the air power, I mean, against, or especially against Empire, they are, Empire gets stricken from everything. I mean, they get stripped from their power, ability to control the air, ability to do harassment, ability to do anything else, and they were always in a position between making anti-air and then making some land army. And surely, yeah, tank busters are strong, but we're speaking about so many myriad of units that one can get. And you either must get a second Maccabi, which is very expensive, or just, for example, get with Lucky. Like, for example, you will need VXs. You will need Tengus for air. And speaking of units, we see a very fast tier 3 is being happening. I was thinking if I'm casting the wrong replay because there is one also replay between Alente and another player. I will cast that uh, as well. I thought it was that because it's also titled as tier 3 action or something. I can't really remember. Anyway, first PX on the field now going around with these Apollos. And Apollos are now engaging with the Tengus, but this VX is doing a little bit wonders for these Apollos. I'm sorry, for the Tengus. On the meantime, four Vindicator just for one single collector. I think Master Ace should time the bombings around here. So the Vindicator Bob Splash can deal damage both collector and refinery. But once again, um, I mean, this is a quite difficult situation for the Alente as well. He is now constantly being bombarded, and you know the Allies means superior area power. Now, this is the mistake of the Master X. You have two air bases. Why would you get an IFV? And this is completely unnecessary. You can always freely bomb around his base. Now Apollos and Tengus are engaging, but now Tengus are targeting the Vindicators actually, but these reactions are dealing free damage to all of these Apollos. And we see, I think I count one Apollo only, or maybe two. I see two debris, but one Apollo has fallen. But our refinery is down, that's something. Now, refinery count is now balanced, 3 to 3. And also, don't forget that this observation post is not serving to Alvin. I was going to say Master X, I'm sorry. It's going to serve him. And what did he do? He tried to use a cryo blast on the cryo shot over here. But uh, Alvin sees everything in this game. But why would you try to do that? At the point when you fly your planes, you will realize that something is up. And he will probably like realize what's going on, why the planes are coming here, and then he will still be selling. Speaking of oh, off HP already. Oh okay. I mean I like this move. Tier 3 and wave force R3. So you will take the fight directly to it. On the meantime, uh Master X wants to really utilize the air power. I'm sorry, the map vision. Point defense rules. I hope you have point defense rules. And he had and wait for such reactions. So why just I mean this is HP like you can die to conscript attack. But now I think the trouble is really really brewing for the Master X. I mean he has nothing on the land. He has one armor facility. He is tier two, which is nice. But I don't think oh ah crack off the but this grab of the body gets destroyed, now Apollos are there, and that's why you shouldn't get the IFP, I mean, for all of the fight long, this IFP was attacking with uh, Chopper VXs, but only to manage to take two of them only, now Javelins and IFP is a free and Fortunately, I mean, the target has been kicked down, the way for Sanji is down, but there is a huge fat key only around the base. This Vindicator is doing absolutely nothing, by the way, and Alvin decides to crush the wall with a very powerful tier 3 unit. And this base still stands with just a couple of air units and a handful of infantry. Alvin, I think he is a bit playing relaxed, but it, this is not a point of being relaxed. I mean, this game is still on, and the moment that Alvin Tay loses the momentum, he can lose it. He can lose it very badly to this air, air superpower, and what kind of cryoblast is this? Very, very careless cryoblast. I mean, even if it was there, he could sell these walls 
and I'm moving to run. Also, he has a spare collector. I mean, it goes without saying, but all you need is actually like a 5 to 10 Imperial Warriors to breach this base, and that would be all. Now, Cryopopter came to ride to finish the job that Cryoblast couldn't do, and Alan says, I guess he is fine with this. He says, okay, fine, I mean, go ahead and take the hit by collectors. After all, I will be taking your own base, and this unit is actually more than enough to destroy the entire base of the Master X. Now, Cryopopter use this indicator. Unfortunately, has only one bomb. I guess that only one bomb. Now, so many aliens, and this King only is doing absolutely nothing. At this point, I think Master X I wasn't finished. If only he had one spy, he could actually be another one thing. But he's losing. He's losing his crapopper, he's losing uh, his base, his air base. Now the barracks, now there's two, only one air base left. The game is pretty much over, right? There's a shrunk in only. He's ready to go again. Uh oh. Okay, now he's back on full size. Go and engage. That should be hard. Taking down the wave for Star Trek, it's a relief, but not a relief that you will be asking for. Power plant is no wonder attack. The Guardian tank is using target forces. I mean, not a bad combination. An effort for trying. Two Guardian tanks are matching against this King Oni. And Alente is very precarious with this King Oni. I mean, come on, this is a King Oni and it has lots of HP. Uh, I mean, enough for letting him go toe to toe with the Apocalypse tank. And now beautiful microplay is happening. I mean, Alvin Tate is now being played like a clown here. Alvin, what are you doing? Just use your units. I mean, a poor performance, but I think he feels a bit very relaxed. He says, I mean, I have this game in my pocket, so I don't even need to I mean, micro my units. I just use Q and A, and I mean, beat destroying these walls, beat, I mean, attacking units. Doesn't really care. I'm winning this game. I wonder if we're going to see some Scion Decimator or something like that. But again, this is allies. And the trouble is, they can always come back in a very dire situation. Once again, he's picking off the collectors, which is nice. And he tries to deal some damage on the back lines. On the meantime, Alvin is indecisive. He doesn't know what to prioritize. And he has a second Cryocopter. But this Cryocopter is having no escort of help and gets destroyed immediately. Now this King Oni is asking for him being crushed, I mean... At this point, Alvin is just throwing, but... Okay, Master X is also throwing, I mean, letting go of that Vindicator and also Cryocopter! I mean, you just nullified the damage that you have dealt. Once again, another Cryocopter and... At least we have Tangus here. There's one Tangus. Now this crack of the dangerously what? Dangerously close to the reactors and just get destroyed. I mean interestingly both of our players are actually doing some execution errors. Like they forget their units, they forget their what they're doing. I'm not gonna try and get a fair share of destruction and there is no cryocopter here. This power plant also takes damage from the wave for Shattering Game. How is that happening? They insult the Empire! One cry that just goes down for shrinking this wave for Shattering How much worthy is that going to be? Now, Armor Facility has been sold. This MCV is doing absolutely nothing. Once again, another cry of the but well, you have nothing on the land to deal damage. So what's the point of the Cryocopters? Finally being more mindful with the Cryocopter, but it's too late and this time I think is actually just shredded it instead. I, mean, I was going to say like he is the MVP of the game and killing Cryocopters one by one, but now gets shredded with these Apollos, like Apollo hits but just for a few. Do not test me! Crush move, crush move. Ah. Anyway, from the looks of it, Alvin gets the win this time. A bit more interesting game. I don't know the chronological order of these games, but I mean, we, now we all see that, for example, Ripja was very effective 
against Empire or maybe against Alvin Tezel because Alvin, for example, he built his Mecha Bay way too. And that means only one thing, just get some javelins into the Riptide and then proceed into his base without taking any kind of harm or damage. And then just destroy everything. Simple as it is. But instead he decided to do something else. Anyway, hopefully I get the correct replay. And now this is the third game. Once again, the name is like just how to bash X or Y, it doesn't really matter. Anyway, this is the third game between our rival <laughs> Alvin and Master X. Now, this is a little bit better. I mean, instead of going a very quick airbase, I always like a barracks opening because it will always give you opportunity to do something else. And for most of the times, you get to see allies always start with a very, very, very quick airbase. And I find that a little bit risky. But anyway. Also, guys, I still think of like what would be this year's game, like the game of 2023. I know there are so many games, but probably you have watched and I haven't seen it, or vice versa. But it's really hard to say, like, over what we're going to evaluate. Like, is it going to be like for the content? Like, for example, are we going to evaluate as for skills? Is it going to be the length of the game and how much combat or stuff happened? Is it going to be like, for example, um, skills? Is it going to be around for how to say the length of the game? Or is it going to be some funny thing? For example, I usually prefer funny things like seeing an MC be crushed by a tank. That's that stuff is funny for me. For example, if that Kingoni was crushed by the MCV, uh, I will find that a little bit funny. Now, once again, we go to some Imperial Warriors fighting against it, and there is no javelin here. And Master X is actually stutter moving, but then gets slashed over there. <laughs> oh no, where is your javelin? This first round, I really like this first round. Now, this Dojo Core is following these <laughs> Peacekeepers, but Peacekeepers are now outmatched. This Dojo Core is now standing idle with the Raid HP, but doesn't really matter. Javelin arrives, but what's the point of getting Javelin when all of your units just die? Now, Master X definitely needs a multi gunner threat. Now, Alente draw the swords and going straightly after this Javelin. But now, this gives opportunity for taking down this Dojo Core. But now, another one arrived. The Vindicators just in time arrived to destroy all of these Dojo Cores. But, more, but wait, <laughs> there is more, but yes. We'll be gonna try to just deploy it in time and now taking fire on the Dojo Core and already dealing some nice chunky splash damage to this what we're gonna try. On the meantime, I mean front line is not looking very good for the Master X. On the back lines we see Mecha Bay is being built. A very late Mecha Bay once again. I mean Master X, this will be another game where you get Riptide. I mean why you are over relying on Vindicators? They are nice, they are fine, but Riptides are just a very quick and simple and cheaper option against Imperial Infantry Rush or even for example just going down moving down a base. Now Alvin is staying for the three refinery of the meantime Master X is also staying with the three refineries. So income is balanced right now. So who's ever going to make the fourth expansion point is going to risk a lot because one point unless your opponent is also considering expanding then you should not definitely go for the fourth expansion point. At least that's what I believe. For the main reason is I mean, you can always get your refinery, but then you will meet a fat army on your doorstep to mow down your base. That's something I personally hate a lot. And also, that's something that happens to me a lot. <laughs> anyway, now we see once again, 3 to 1, I mean, come on. Respect your opponent and get two in the case, this is the two Apollos. You just can't handle four or let's say so many tangles just one Apollo. Not, not even enough to scare them off. But anyway, with multi-gunner, we have with the multi-gunner turret, we now destroyed two tangles, but two of them have been replaced already now. There's an airspace trouble for the Alvin. This will get it all barely survived. 
was actually nice. I mean, not overextending, not overcommitting. Now, Master X realizing how OP this observation post, <laughs> observation post. <laughs> yeah, we can also call it as OP as well. Anyway, now Master X realizing how OP the OP is, now captures it for himself. But then you realize, I mean. You can also destroy this because with Apollos you can always get the map information. Of course, this is a static vision boost and it's actually huge. I mean, guys, you just see the entire base of your opponent. And somehow people said, okay, for this. Kick the tires and, like, and light the fire. Engineer here and you will get a vision boost. Oh, that's nice. How much is it going to take? If it's going to give this much. I mean, how can your opponent make any kind of counterplay or even device or even cook something when you can see all happening around here? Like, this is literally a map pack or something like that. Okay, finally we see some respectable Apollo numbers against the Tengus. And at this point, I don't think Alvin can handle the amount of this much of Tengus. Now, all the Tengus have landed. Defender VX is now under threat. I think it's overkill. Uh, two Vindicators were enough for one single Defender VX, but I think three of his Vindicators just broke all of the load around here. But uh, I think Alvin wouldn't need it because he has now access to point defense drones already. So when he feels he's safe enough, right now for example, the fire and Cryoblast has been used. And now we see a massive engagement now. Alvin is actually just dodging all of the follows and goes basically for the Vindicators, but now this engagement is working very well in his favor. I mean, lost. <coughs> he already. Uh, Master X already lost his one indicator, two. I can't. Okay, one indicator and. Yep, four Apollos. And we have soon to be defrosted the Fender VX. So, what was that going to worth? It worth nothing. But now, we see Assault Destroy is being built. I hope this is Assault Destroy, by the way. I mean, if it is, it's going to be very game changing. If you could destroy this with two Vindicators, why would you bother with really? <laughs> Cryoblast? Now you lost one more Vindicator as well. Now Tengus are sneaking in the base, but here's a trick. The Assault Destroy is on and you have no... Okay, you have two Vindicators. Now Tengus are now assaulting this Prospector. One Prospector goes down. I mean, these power plants are now completely exposed. And Master X is actually using Vindicators to handle all of these Tengus and... Would it have a trickless castle? Yes, sir. Thank Busters. In response against... I mean, you could build some wolves and escort your collector, by the way. Now, these things are giving the fight of their life for taking down this terrain. But I would consider... I don't know, maybe I would go for power plant. But no, there is no power plant, so... Oh, okay, there is. So move your things near. We're dealing for extra damage. Say, why bother it, right? Anyway, this thing I think would go for scouting or something. I'm unsure. Anyway, now we see Assault Destroy just going back for repairs and tier 3. Where is the tier 3 mass race? All you need is one aircraft carry and this will be the game. Uh, instead, I mean, look at this arm. Vindicator, I'm taking so much damage already. That was nice. I think bombs dealt enough splash damage already. Now one Riptide scouting around the base of the Alvin. But now, ooh, that's a lot of fall. I think at this point, you may not need any Tengus, but you can actually go for just... You can actually go for Striker Reactions already. I mean, why would you go for something like that? Also, how many Riptide and so many Assault Destroys? Ah, come on. You're being careless now, Alvin. You're letting this happen twice. Just sell these walls, move your collector, and that will be the save for you. And unlike the previous game, you don't have fat tier 3 tech. Tsunami tech. It's for real. Why would you go for that? Anyway, this is also a nice move still. I mean, Al Master X is going to tear down the backbone of the base of Alvin. But Alvin just says, okay, no, no problem. I'm going to end this game. And now Vindicator 1 goes down. Vindicator 2... Now, this multi mana threat should be addressed very quickly, otherwise, say goodbye to all of these tech buses. But now, there's a terrible management of 
still moving down the turret. It was taking healing all of the damage to just one single VX. Now VXs are going down one by one, but doesn't really matter. There's only one protecting this space, and that's just two Riptides. Where is your Javelins? Where is your Peacekeepers? Now Alvin is being feeling happy with this victory and now moving around the base to destroy more and more and more units. On the meantime, the previous game, we see Master X sending some engineers with the Riptides, but now he's not doing anything like that. This is is just staying idle, they're dealing damage to this little warrior. How unnecessary is that a Master X realizing the mistake and quits the game? I mean, you didn't really need those Riptides up there. One Assault Destroyer does the job for you. I mean, just take out the collector and go back. I mean, without aircraft carrier, you can't just really destroy his base, after all. Anyway, for now, this is the end for this series. Uh, if either Alvin Tay or Master X uploads a continuation of this series, probably some more belittling names for the replays, I'll probably cast it. But now, this is the end of this series as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed what you're watching. Uh, feel free to like or leave a comment. Also, I will be waiting your opinion about the Smurfs as well. So I would like to think how other people as well. But I want to hear some answers of people who actually Smurf. So this can be in this game. Like, for example, this can be Andre, Yuna, or any other skilled players. Maybe Demon. Uh, or if you do it in other games, I would like to hear your opinion as well. And why you are doing it as well. Anyway, leave a like. Feel free to comment and consider subscribing. Until then, stay tuned, guys.